Today I wanted to do something a little different and tackle a few topics all relating to Arthur's declining health, Dutch and how Dutch may have possibly made a conscious decision that was further detrimental to Arthur's health and a little bit involving Micah. There's been something about Micah specifically that's been popping up more and more in my comment sections lately, so I just wanted to give my thoughts about that and squish the other two topics into one whole video. Of course, I could have made them into separate videos, but people love to binge these and I didn't think everything brought up here in this video or every conversational point that we're going to be touching on was significant or had enough information to justify making them into their own videos without me running the risk of completely rambling, which I might still do. But with that said, I'd love to hear your take on these if they bring up some more questions or small pieces of speculation that has sparked up as this video goes on. Please share them down below as well as maybe suggest some other topics or ideas you had in the back of your mind you would love to have brought up into a video similar to this in the future. But let's start with what I would consider to be the least interesting of today's topics. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called... Hey Molly, where's Dutch? Well, however it goes. Micah being an Adriscoll. I've seen this mentioned a few times with the main reason as to why people are saying this is because of some little thing called the video game logic. Or I suppose it can make its way into the real world with gangs and proper representation based off colors or vests displaying allegiance to a particular organization. Here, in the world of Red Dead Redemption 2, one of the more prominent gangs, the O'Driscolls, are identified with the color green. The gang's members are often seen with green, green shirts, green vests, green handkerchiefs, in Combs' case, a green necktie. Micah wears a green scarf. The color isn't exactly as vibrant or a direct representation of the Idrisco's chosen shade of green, but let's push that aside and humor this for just a second. While there is no concrete information on Micah having any sort of connection or affiliation with the Idrisco's, I feel it's important to point out Micah's absence in the Idrisco's assault on Shady Bell as another point of reference as to why he may be a plant. Throw on top of it the suspicious circumstances as to Arthur's kidnapping, when Micah, the most temperamental and hot-headed member of the entire Vanderlyn gang, did something that was completely out of his character. He pushed Dutch to seek peace. Peace with someone that Micah, of all people, had to be aware that peace for Dutch was not a possibility. It's a giant red flag to us because obviously Micah is the first one to drop diplomacy and put a hole on anybody's head. After all, a bullet is far easier to replace than the money he's losing by bringing in extra for Dutch to make up for the weaker members of the gang, that they aren't carrying their own weight. During Arthur's capture, Colm also admits to Arthur the whole point of the meeting was basically a setup. The plan was always to capture Arthur and use him as bait to have Dutch arrested and seized by the law. Admittedly, it was Pearson who actually set up the entire meeting, but it was Micah who actively pushed Dutch to meet with Colm, and it was possibly Micah who convinced Dutch to not worry when Arthur failed to meet them at the agreed rendezvous spot after said meeting. There was no rescue team or flare-up as to where Arthur was or why he failed to meet with Dutch and Micah. With no contact being made with anyone of the Vanderlyn gang following the meeting, you would think they'd be worried or preparing some type of search party, but that was far from the case. Who's to say Micah didn't play a hand in relieving Dutch's worry, giving Colm what he wanted? And see, that's where it gets a little difficult. I think from camp conversations, catching Micah stuck up to Dutch, and in the cutscene seeing Micah doing the exact same thing, just serving anything and everything Dutch wants on a silver platter, I don't think Micah ever had the intention of specifically betraying Dutch. I don't think he had an allegiance to Colm, in other words. I still think the meetup and Arthur's capture was serving Micah more than anything else. I think Arthur was an obstacle and this was his way of just completely eliminating Arthur and removing him from the picture. Sure, the events surrounding Arthur's capture are incredibly suspicious and nobody would fault you for raising an eyebrow at Micah and his affiliation to the Adriscals, but we also can't forget as Micah was there during both times in Coulter, he helped save Dutch from the Adriscals that took over the Adler Ranch. He was there when Dutch made the choice of raiding Combs' camp and stealing his plans and explosives 
to rob Leviticus Cornwall's train. While Micah may not have been there during the assault on Shady Bell per se, he was still there during certain clashes and he is responsible for a number of Adriscals being killed, not only under Detch's direction but even his own actions up in Strawberry that resulted in him being arrested and Arthur having to go save him, or even the subsequent mission with Micah where they go to rob a bank wagon and him and Arthur have to fight off scores of Adriscals. The only other thing I would say might lend a little credence to this is I still find it a little questionable as to how Micah came to be aware of Dutch and just miraculously bumped into him into a random bar and saved him. And then there's that bounty that he has of Dutch's name that's worth a thousand dollars. I still say that bounty predates the events of Red Dead Redemption 2 and we don't know too much about what Micah was up to leading up to the moment he ran into Dutch but I suppose it's not completely out of the realm of possibility that Micah had some affiliation to this gang and from them learned of Dutch and just by naturally seeing him in person or seeing how he spoke and what he stood for or how he conducted himself in that bar he just decided to switch sides and have allegiance to Dutch who really knows but I personally think he's not an address school and I still would say that him him being affiliated to them is a little bit of a stretch that if we there is country in Roanoke Ridge past Butcher Creek I believe we could hold okay you and Charles you can take folks up that away this one is interesting. While tuberculosis was a common reason for many deaths during this time period, with the belief that people could find their cure through drier climates, Roanoke Ridge, or the camp of Beaver Hollow that was located up in Roanoke Ridge, was the furthest place from ideal in terms of Arthur's advanced stage of tuberculosis. The camp of Beaver Hollow is placed in a rugged, mountainous area deep within the forest, right next to a stream. Let's assume the knowledge of ideal climate conditions is something that is universally known across the entire Vanderland gang, from Dutch to Arthur himself. And I think that's a fair assessment because during Arthur's diagnosis, he makes a comment about settling down further west in California, an area that would have been much better suited for the much needed rest that his body required. What do you mean? You're real sick. You... It's a progressive disease. And you'll be... Now, the best thing is rest and getting somewhere warm and dry and taking it easy. Now, is that possible? Sure, I can just take my winters in my country club in California. No, it's not possible. Now, like we did with Micah being in Driscoll, let's look at Dutch's decision to head towards Roanoke Ridge from two different directions. On the one hand, up in Roanoke Ridge, it's not too different from where they're at in Lacay Lake. Lacay Lake is hot and extremely humid. While it served as just a temporary meetup or safe house for the gang to regroup in wake of the failed Saint Denis bank robbery, Roanoke Ridge was meant to be much more, let's say, permanent. As Dutch says, it's an area they could hold out in. Keep in mind, this is just after they were ambushed by the Pinkertons here at Lake Lake, so they're pushed further east, something that they do every single time the Pinkertons catch up to them. And it pushes them more away from Dutch's long-standing dream of virgin lands out in the west. So, on the one hand, it sounds like a good, formidable position where the gang could continue to stay on the run and hopefully launch some operations that could secure them a little bit of money. The pattern of events and even the distance or the exact location isn't so foreign or out of the ordinary that it has anyone's ears perk. With the exception of Charles. As soon as Arthur tells him where they're headed to, he immediately mentions that being Murphy country, and is well aware of how dangerous the Murphy brood are, which is a group of people hiding out in the local woods that are more akin to serial killers than an actual gang, on account of their affinity for torturing and dismembering victims of theirs. Now, as we know, everything works out well for Arthur and Charles, with them easily clearing out the Murphys they run into, but it's a peculiar thought to think, what if this entire thing was a setup by Dutch? Dutch, over the course of the game, has shown that in certain circumstances, he's rather brash. He's quick to anger, and easy to forget those he once called sons. Right before Dutch sends Arthur out with Charles to clear out the land in Roanoke Ridge, Dutch is the victim of a harsh reality check. A reality check delivered by Arthur. We need more money. We've been on the run for months now, and I've seen you killing folk in cold blood like you always told me not to, and I'm sorry, but I can't help but think that if we There is country in Roanoke Ridge past Butcher Creek, I believe we could hold. Okay. You and Charles, you can take folks up that away. Micah and I need to do some reconnaissance. It's one of the only moments where 
Arthur directly calls Dutch out on all his misdeeds and wrongdoings that he's been committing lately, and it's a rather firm way that he does it, where he's holding him entirely accountable for it. Dutch becomes visibly upset and agitated, so much so he swiftly interrupts Arthur and tells him to move the gang out to Roanoke Ridge so he and Micah can do some reconnaissance. It's one of the earlier parts where it's very apparent that Micah is starting to replace Arthur a little bit more and it's one that Dutch may have had some well-informed intentions behind because keep in mind in subsequent missions that take place in Beaver Hollow Dutch actually calls Arthur out on being sick he makes fun of him he mocks him he cites it as the reason why Arthur doubts him he's delusional on account of his sickness one other thing I wanted to point out is how Dutch goes about trying to get rid of the family he sees as obstacles he appears to be unwilling to deal with them himself he leaves John to be captured in Saint-Denis. This is after John started to grow more and more disobedient, openly questioning Dutch and how real the dreams he's selling are. As we know, John became more and more doubtful of Dutch and even Hosea after Jack was kidnapped, beginning the decline of John and Dutch's relationship. Dutch let him get captured, or so it was claimed, and seemingly was content with John swinging for his crimes in Siska Penitentiary. Dying alone or in custody was a fate he repeated for John at the end of the game, when he got shot off the train and Dutch and Micah claiming to save him instead just left him on the side of the train tracks. Arthur too was a victim of Dutch just walking out and leaving him to die, only to be saved by eagle flies. And because of that, it's actually quite plausible to say Dutch was agitated in this moment and thought, hey Arthur's on his way out, his health is declining. If the Murphy Brood don't kill him now, or anything else that happens in the future, then maybe this location can help expedite that process. He would no longer be an obstacle, I can do whatever I so please and don't have to worry about him anymore. Chiefs, wherever you is, there's Pinkertons and vice versa, so you better watch your goddamn mouth, boy! <laughs> or... <laughs> <laughs> Did Arthur attempt to infect Micah with tuberculosis? Low Honor Arthur is a monster, completely different beast from regular or high honor. I mean, no matter how you slice it, Arthur as a whole is still a cold-blooded outlaw. I don't think leaning too much one way into his honor or the other makes the things he says or does out of character for him or reach a point that feels foreign or unnatural for him to say or do. But no. <laughs> There's never a point where I would see him intentionally infecting Micah with tuberculosis. Yes, Arthur appears to have a bottom line understanding of it and how people contract it. He's aware of how he got it from Thomas Down since he sources that as the moment where he got it to Sister Calderon. What's wrong? I'm, uh, uh, I'm dying, sister. Okay. Yeah, I got TB. I got it. Beating the man to death <clears throat> for a few bucks. Blood was spat into Arthur's face and some landed in his mouth. While the ending of Red Dead Redemption 2 shows Arthur and Micah get up close and personal, with Arthur damn near clinging to life by the skin of his teeth and everything he's ever valued and cherished, even if that meant an honorable toe-to-toe, -toe, man to man type of fight, completely was thrown out the window. But in every single one of the four possible endings from good to bad, there's never a moment where he appears to spit in Micah's face, let alone do it intentionally. I mean, if you even think about it, it's a hell of a thought to fathom Rockstar would have the balls to have their protagonist, bad or evil, full on resort to biological warfare by an intentional intentionally infecting another person with, at that time, what would be considered a very terminal disease. And even if he did, let's play devil's advocate for a second. Let's say during one of the four endings, he did manage to get Micah sick. Unless Micah put his body through hell and stress and something as eventful as Gormo was on Arthur's body where he almost drowned and then got stranded on this island and stuck in the middle of a revolutionary war and then go back home struggling to regroup with the rest of the Vanderlyn gang, save John from Sisica Penitentiary, and then continue to be the glue that's essentially keeping not only Dutch's psyche together, but the Vanderlyn gang as a whole together. I think if it wasn't for Gorma, Arthur may well have still been healthy. The disease could have been dormant in his body for years, and the events of Beaver Hollow could have played out dramatically differently. Seeing how Mike is basically all for himself, I don't see even if he managed to contract tuberculosis via Arthur, I don't see there being a point where 
his body, his mind, and everything else he's being put through is so stressful and so taxing on his physical well-being that he's just going to hit the same point that Arthur ends up hitting. So even if Arthur did succeed and he did manage to spit in his face and Micah contracted the same disease that he's basically mocking Arthur for during the entire last chapter of the game, well, it would be a poetic justice. I don't think it would even play out that way. Even if he did end up getting quote unquote sick or contracting this disease, I still don't think if we did see him during 1907 or during the epilogue the way that we do, I still don't think he would be that sick. He might be showing the early signs that Arthur was exhibiting, which could be nice knowing that a certain particular death is waiting for him around the corner. And you could say Arthur technically would have gotten his revenge that way, but let me know what you think. What do you think about these three topics? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Do you think they're kind of ridiculous and a little out there? I want to hear from you down in the comment section below. Like I said, just a little bit of a different video it seemed like an interesting topic, and I do want to apologize for how I sound. I'm not sick, but I keep fighting this cough. It's very similar to when I got COVID. It was the same type of cough, like an itch in the throat. So uh, I'm sorry if my voice sounds a little funny during this video. But anyways, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video.